Halliburton confirming it finished cementing only 20 hours before the damn thing blew. Just like Halliburton had just finished cementing this Australian well when it blew on August 21st of last year, causing what is now called the Montara spill. A government inquiry still underway there, but zeroing in on the cementing process. Three years after the American MMS found that 18 out of 39 offshore blowouts since 1996 have been caused by bad cementing, a 20-year Halliburton cementer who admitted screwing up in the Montara spill testified this March about his Halliburton training. Quote, have you been taught in training or otherwise become aware that problems with cementing are the number one cause of blowouts? His answer, no, I wasn't aware of that. I am. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. So we elected a government contractor as vice president. Congratulations. This could be Indonesia, sounds like Russia. He signaled that the massive explosion may have stemmed from a mistake made by a subcontractor, Halliburton. These events occurred after the well construction process was essentially complete. All right, let's get into this. First off, this oil rig belongs to BP, which is Dutch Royal Shell Queen Dietrich. What we have here now is actually this. This is a very interesting scenario. It just so happens that the timing is coming right around NLE. But what we see here, this was a major power play gone wrong. Queen Beatrice of the Netherlands owns BP. BP is Dutch Royal Shell. This vein is a connecting vein. It is a very deep subterranean vein that links the oil pool strategic reserve in the Black Hills to the oil pool reserve in Venezuela. The point is that by tapping there, if you understand about drilling rights and things like that, if the, whoever was to tap this particular vein first, which is the most high-pressure vein in the world right now that we know of, um, and um, then they would be able to lay claim to it. So it was a power play between Queen Beatrix and Dick Cheney. Basically, two factions of the Bilderberg are at war here over this, over this natural resource. Point being, timeline of events here, they got to the point where they were almost tapped the vein. They put down the hydraulic cement. Now, typically you are supposed to wait 72 hours mandatory before you start drilling through that cement. Because they knew Halliburton was on their back and was going to be coming out soon and probably trying to sink a rig very close, they tapped it after five hours. You've got to be kidding me. It's ballistic, okay? <sighs> Um, the pressure on the vein was high enough that it actually did lift the rig off the ocean surface. That's true. But it did not break the drill point. The drill point went back down and started drilling. And they started pumping. They didn't even have to pump. It was so high pressure that all they did was open the barrel and it started pouring in. Halliburton, literally, while it was a Halliburton quote-unquote team, the people sent out, they were there for 20 minutes. Halliburton was on the platform for no more than 20 minutes. Essentially, what was on the platform was 10 men from Blackwater. They rigged the entire platform and blew it. The reason being is the only way to prevent Dutch Royal Shell from having the rights on that vein was to eliminate the platform and create a catastrophe that would negate their drilling rights. So they literally, Halliburton literally, intentionally demolitioned platform. Because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now. Because less than 3% of you people read books. Because less than 15% of you read newspapers. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel. The ultimate revelation, this tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it all falls into the hands of the wrong people. And 
when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be fed for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radials, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! Just get up from your chairs right now. Go to Where the window. Where are you going? I want to see if anybody's yelling. Window, open it and stick your head out and yell and keep yelling. I'm... I'm mad as hell! I'm not going to take this anymore! 